And I'm going to share with you why having 24 hours every single day is more than enough if you learn to live present. But before I teach you how to live present, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is I'm going to share with you a very basic strategy on how you can maximize your time, how you can aim for excellence in every moment, and how you can become happier and more successful. The bad news is some of you will choose not to implement this. Some of you will choose not to adopt this strategy. And the reason I say choose is I need you to acknowledge that your habits are in fact a choice. You choose your habits, and your habits are what dictate your happiness and your success. See, happiness and success are not predicated on what we do every once in a while. They're a result of what we do every single day. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. In 2007, Nike flew me to Los Angeles to work the first ever Kobe Bryant Skills Academy. Nike brought in the top high school and college players from around the country for an intensive three-day mini camp with the best player in the world. Now, I had lived in a basketball bubble my entire life, so I had heard the urban legend of how insanely intense Kobe's individual workouts were. So since I was on camp staff, I asked him if I could watch one. He said, sure, I'm going tomorrow at 4. And I said, but Kobe, we have a camp workout tomorrow at 3.30. He said, no, I'm going at 4 a.m. Well, obviously, there's not a legitimate excuse I can come up with on why I can't be somewhere at 4 a.m., so I basically committed myself to being there. And I figured if I was going to be there anyway, I might as well try and impress Kobe. I might as well show him how serious of a trainer I was. So I planned to beat him to the gym. So I set my alarm for 3 a.m. The alarm goes off, I jump up quickly and get myself together, and I hop in a cab. And I get to the gym probably a little after 3.30. And I step out and it's pitch black outside. But I can see that the gym lights are already on. And I can faintly hear a ball bouncing and sneaker squeaking. I slither in the side door and Kobe is already in a full sweat. He was going through an intense warm-up before his scheduled workout started at 4 a.m. Now, I didn't say anything to him, and I didn't say anything to his trainer. I just sat down quietly to watch. And for the first 45 minutes, I was bored out of my mind. For the first 45 minutes, I watched the best player in the game of basketball do the most basic offensive moves in footwork. He was doing stuff that I had already done with middle school age players. Now please understand, he was doing it at a super high level of intensity and his precision was razor sharp. But the stuff he was doing was so basic. Now the entire workout took around two hours and when it was done, I didn't say anything to him, I didn't say anything to his trainer, I just left. But later that day, curiosity got the best of me. I had to ask him, Kobe, you're the best player in the world. Why are you doing such basic drills? And he looked at me and smiled, but said very seriously, why do you think I'm the best player in the world? Because I never get bored with the basics. Kobe taught me a really pivotal lesson that morning, and that's just because something is basic, it doesn't mean that it's easy. If it was easy, everyone else would do it. But we live in a world that wants us to skip steps that begs us to circumvent the process, that encourages us to chase what's hot and what's flashy and what's sexy and ignore what's basic. The basics work. They always have and they always will. The most basic concept I know of is time. Yet despite its simplicity, an appreciation and a respect for time is the key to being as happy and as successful as possible. I'm 41 years old. The average life expectancy for males in the United States is 79 years old, which means statistically, I'm at the half time of my life. Now, if you're my age or older, you can probably agree with me, that first half went by really quick. And the speed at which time has flown by makes me realize that time is without question our most valuable resource. Now, I want you to take a second, and I want you to imagine that your life is like an hourglass. And the moment you were born, that hourglass got flipped over and the sand started falling. And I've learned three indisputable truths about time. Three indisputable truths about that hourglass. Number one, 
none of us has any idea how much sand is at the top. Time is not promised. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Every one of us knows someone whose sand ran out unexpectedly. Number two, we can't stop the sand from going to the bottom. You can't stop time. You can't pause time. Time is continuous. It's ever fleeting. That clock is always ticking, and that calendar is always turning. And three, once that sand hits the bottom, it's gone. We can't get time back. They've already printed yesterday's newspaper. There's nothing we can do about it. So time is without question our most valuable resource. Well, with that being true, that means our attention is our number one currency. Because where you put your attention, that shows what you value. And when you give someone your full attention, you show them that you care. And caring is what creates connection. And connection is the foundation of happiness and success. Which means we need to give the people that matter in our lives our full attention. Which means we need to put our phones down, we need to close our laptops, we need to turn off our TVs. In order to truly connect, we actually need to unplug. Now it doesn't get any more basic than that. So how do we do that? We live present. So what does it mean to live present? It means be where your feet are. Wherever your feet are, that's where your head and your heart need to be. If you're with your kids, be with your kids. When you're at work, be at work. You need to make sure that you pour into everything that you're doing. Now, I make that sound very basic, but trust me, it is not easy. In fact, living present is one of the biggest challenges that all of us have, and it takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. A couple of months ago, I was involved in a charity event. It was being put on by serial entrepreneur, author, and endurance superman, Jesse Itzler. And the event was basic in premise, but trust me, it was not easy. We had to run up and down an 80-yard hill that was at a 40-degree slope a hundred times. Yes, a hundred times. That's over eight miles. So the event was appropriately named Hell on the Hill. The head basketball coach at Marquette was also one of the runners, and he and I were on about the same pace. And around three hours into it, right around the 70 rep mark, I hit a wall. I was struggling. I was physically, mentally, and emotionally spent. If I can be quite honest with you guys, I wanted to quit. And since I knew he and I were on about the same pace, I asked him, I said, how many do you have left? And he said, one rep. And I was confused. To be honest, I was really pissed off because there's no way he only had one rep. And then he finished his sentence. He said, I have one rep 30 more times. And that is the definition of living present. You don't focus on the hundred, you focus on the next rep. And living present is what allowed me to get through that somewhat brutal yet fun event. And living present is what is allowing me now to be happier and more fulfilled than I've ever been in my life. But it's important you know, there is a big difference between knowing how to live present and actually living present. We've all heard that knowledge is power. Guess what? It's not. That's a lie. That's a myth. Knowledge is not power. It's the application of knowledge that is powerful. Knowing is not enough. And knowledge unapplied is completely worthless. Every human being on the planet knows that smoking is bad for your health. Yet smoking is still the number one preventable cause of death in the United States. It kills half a million people every single year. And every one of those 500,000 people knows that smoking is bad for them. So clearly knowing is not enough. You have to make the choice to act. You have to make the choice to commit to the basics. You have to make the choice to live present. Because the choices you make today will determine who you are tomorrow. I want to thank you very much for your presence. I want to thank you for your attention, but my sand has run out. Thanks. Thanks.